Finally, we have a cylinder after months of waiting for parts from the supplier to the repair station that did the work. So basically it came down to an issue with the foundry not having the material. So I guess the guy had to like dig the stuff out of the ground for the foundry to make it, for the guy to build it and the guy to repair it and send it back. But we've got it. I did the unboxing late last night and I uh, wanted to make sure everything was good. So we've got some footage of that. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna go through the installation of a cylinder on a Franklin. So uh, stick around. This channel is about working on aircraft and flying those airplanes. So come take a seat and let's go for a flight. <laughs> We're gonna go through and uh, kind of do like an overview, kind of explain what we're doing here. I'm gonna show you the tools, uh, some of the different specific things on the Franklin that are different than Lycoming and the Continental engines. And uh, yeah, let's just get to it. So let's get this baby unwrapped. What's so different about a Franklin? It's got weird valve covers on it. The cylinders are square. Uh, but the interesting thing about the Franklin cylinders is that the entire cylinder is all cast aluminum, which differs from Lycoming, Continental, and other traditional cylinders, is the head is aluminum and the steel barrel is spun into and press fit into the, to, to, to make the assembly. With the Franklins, the entire cylinder is cast aluminum and the inside bore is a sleeve. That's the difference. So there's no oversizing of a Franklin cylinder. You just simply heat press the old cylinder sleeve out and put in a new one and you have a factory new cylinder every single time. So what we're going to do here is just kind of go over the parts and pieces that uh, we're going to be dealing with here and we're going to start off with the order of the cylinders. This is the front of the motor. This is where the propeller should go but we have to take it off because the front bowl assembly is one piece and that's kind of a pain. The cylinder order is on the pilot side the very aft one number one cylinder, number two cylinder, co-pilot side, three, back on the pilot side, four, which we're missing something here, five and six. And you'll also notice on the very top of the cover, they'll have numbers on them. So you can know what cylinder you're working on because all the even cylinders are on the right-hand side. The, the other cool thing about the Franklins is that the top cover can be unbolted and you can have access all the way through the engine and you can even look at your cam. I realize my paint is peeling off the top cover, but please don't judge. So what we have for induction or the in inlet air into the engine is this manifold right here. This is the, the balance tube which connects to the other side and this is the elbow that goes down into the carburetor. Probably the most important thing to remember to do before you torque down the cylinder attachment bolts is to connect all of those cylinders on this bank to this cast intake manifold. The reason for that is that it there's a little bit of movement in the cylinder and if you bolt all, the, all three of these cylinders together they'll be in perfect alignment so that when they torque down, you won't have induction leaks. Oh, somebody had asked me the question, what are these little purple things hanging out of the cylinders? These are desiccant plugs. They're great for our wonderful environment of liquid sunshine here in the Evergreen State. So anytime that I'm not using the airplane for any period of time or if I have extended maintenance, I'll throw these desiccant plugs in. They're 14 millimeter 
and I think I got them on eBay or something. So, but uh, yeah, John, Deskins. Freshly overhauled cylinder. We've already done the unboxing at home, but we'll do it again here. Oh, Lordy. I think the box weighs as much as the cylinder does. So, the entire cylinder, you can see it's rather squarish. Large fin area. But this entire cylinder from here all the way to the base is one piece. It's all cast aluminum. And then the sleeve is thermically pressed into the cylinder and it goes all the way up to the combustion chamber. And then there's a little uh, lock key here. It's a little safety key. So we have three rings that go on to the piston. The very bottom one is your oil control ring. Uh, this one is symmetrical so its orientation is either up or down. You have a uh, middle scraper ring, and then you have your top compression ring. Now, these two have to be installed in a particular orientation because the edges of them very minutely, I mean, you can't even detect it practically with the eye, have to be in a certain orientation. And in the Franklin service manual, it will show you those uh, those ring configurations right here. Now to know which one is which, there's usually a mark. Sometimes uh, they they take a, a marker and and write top on the on the top of the ring. Uh, but there's also, if you look very very carefully at the top of the ring little indentation like a little little dimple let's see there's one right here and then one right there so when we install these rings onto the piston we want to offset these gaps in between them by roughly 30 degrees that way the gap doesn't line up sequentially with the other rings thereby eliminating any blow-by through a sequential gap in those rings. This is a ring compressor and these are special, they're, they're not like automotive, I guess you could use them for automotive, but uh, the automotive spring compressors are usually one piece and you tap the, the piston down through and into the, uh, into the block, whereas these have to be split because you're going to install the cylinder with the piston installed onto the connecting rod which is in the crank. So you need that little gap in order to uh, remove this once you get the piston seated inside of the cylinder. And we have these special pliers that will hold this in place until we're ready to take it off. And then hit the lever, open it up, take this off. These are the ring installation pliers. The ring gets put onto feet here. So this will grab around the ring holds it up here and then it'll spread the ring so I can slide over the piston into its respective grooves. The way to check the the ring is to install it just on the inside of the cylinder here and then check the gap. Uh, there's a measurement in the manual for what that should be. Carefully take that out of there. And then we're going to uh, place our T-gauge in 
doing this one-handed, you get this perfectly perpendicular and lock down your set screw. So you want to measure all the way down and in all directions. So the T gauges, calipers, and feeler gauges are needed to check all the wear limits on the rings to the cylinder. So we're going to finish cleaning up everything. We're going to get the rings installed onto the piston, get them correctly orientated, and then uh, uh, before we actually install the cylinder, we want to make sure that on the base, there's actually an O-ring that goes here. Make sure, because I can't tell you how many times I've heard stories, or might have done it myself, to forget to put that O-ring on the bottom of the cylinder. Now it's in here. Whew. Whew. Scared me. When, when they send it to you, it's about that small. <laughs> However, when we unfurl it, and then I use a product to lubricate almost all of my O-rings, is Parker Lube. This stuff is a little bit expensive, and really the only place I've been able to find it locally uh, was down at the hydraulic shop down in Everett. Um, but uh, don't forget to put this on. I do this like right away, that way you don't forget it. So, you remember that factoid I had mentioned about taking the top cover off to get access to the crankshaft and to look at your cam and everything? Well, it also comes in handy when you want to take a connecting rod off. So, because this is a middle cylinder, and normally what we do is we would load up the piston just past the rings, but before the connecting rod. And what we do is we keep the wrist pin hanging out, pull the cylinder up to the connecting rod and push the wrist pin into the connecting rod and then finish installing the cylinder. The problem is you can't get the wrist pin past the other cylinders. So with the Franklin, you're able to take the top cover off and get access to the castellated nuts that hold the connecting rod on and then you can just pull the whole thing out. I've already installed the piston with the connecting rod and now we're gonna reinstall it back on the engine. All right, once we're ready to start installing the cylinder onto the case, we need special tools called cylinder wrenches. These are designed to go around the cylinder, torque the hold down nuts. So without these special wrenches that go around the cylinders, it makes it very difficult to torque these nuts on the studs. Lycoming has their style and Continental has their style, again. Franklin's got to be different. Now I've actually built my own. These are specialty to the Franklin. You notice these are actually completely straight all the way across. That's because the flanges on the cylinder for the fins, they're perpendicular. Let's put it that way. So we, we need this direct, almost a 90 degree turn to get around the cylinder. I don't know of anybody that sells these. I was able to make my own. I just sacrifice 5 8 and a 9 16 put them on a bar stock, and then uh, took some old sockets and welded them on all together to make my wrenches. I'm not the best welder, but find a welding buddy. That's my best advice. Antwerp. Reusing cotter pan just damages my soul. I'm gonna make sure not to drop this one. 
The cylinder is mounted. The connecting rod is reconnected. The journal has been torqued and safetyed. Um, so before we actually snug down the, the hold down nuts, we're going to take the intake manifold and we're going to bolt that up to all three of these cylinders. We'll do that real quick and then we'll probably call it a night because it's been a full day. So, I switched all of these hold down bolts to internal wrenching. Uh, that way I can use a ball ended, ball -ended Allen wrench and then I cut the height down so it will actually reach in here and get into these little recesses. Super tight, just uh, another snug. And then we can uh, torque down all the nuts on the cylinder. Well, um, it may not seem like it to you, but it's now the following day. Um, that was, uh, that was a, a jam-packed day. Um, with getting the cylinder and dealing with the connecting rod and everything. Um, last night I took that top cover home and uh, I got rid of all that peeling paint so I don't have to apologize for the appearance of the top of my motor anymore. So I'm going to install that because um, I don't like having basically the internals of the engine exposed. So I'm going to throw the top cover back on and then we're going to do the torque on the cylinder and then uh, start putting all the induction system and exhaust back together. So, next step. So, if you've ever wondered what these orange seals are, or if you know what these are, and ever thought, eh, are these worth it? Hell yeah, they're worth it. <laughs> These are called real gaskets, and believe it or not, they make them for the Franklin. So. Oh, oh there's quite a bit of oil up here. Just a moppy moppy. So the key with the real gaskets is, especially on these larger panels, uh, make sure that you're torquing them down uh, evenly. I use a pattern, I cross back and forth, back and forth across the whole panel. Make sure they're all started before you start locking them down. And the big thing with these silicone gaskets is not to over tighten them. I think the, the, I think the recommended torque is 25 inch pounds. That's like barely finger tight. What happens when you over torque them that gasket will start to squeeze and it starts opening up gaps on either side of that fastener so just very gently with the real gaskets we've got two diameter studs for the hold down and we have a 3 8 24 and a 7 16 20. 
the 3 8 we're going to torque between 240 and 300 inch pounds and the 7 16 are going to be the 300 to 330 so uh, what is that the 7 16 will be roughly was that 27 and a half inch foot pounds and the other one's going to be 23 if I'm calculating in my head correctly so um, we're going to do the big ones first because they're on the inside and then we'll do the outside ones. I was off by half a foot pounds, 22 and a half. Now a little known thing about torque wrenches is that these little bad boys are calibrated. Now they're calibrated from the center of the ratchet. So when we take any kind of adapter or an extension If we have our adapter extending off of the torque wrench, the calibration doesn't apply and you need to make a calculation. However, if you turn it 90 degrees, this arm is still the same distance from the center of the ratchet to the way it's calibrated. No correction. So. If at all possible, try and make your torques so that the adapter is 90 degrees. The last time I torqued these, this thing was sitting on an engine stand. So the motor mount and the rest of the stuff is in the way. So I'm going to switch up, torque up the 3 8 and then I'm going to remove the intake manifold because I have to put I have to put gaskets on it anyways. I was able to get the top ones torqued and make sure the bottoms are snugged up, but the uh, intake manifold's in the way. I can't get it to swing through, so we're gonna take that off and finish up all the torquing. No, I'm not doing the. I'm not torquing. I'm torquing. Tork, tork, torquing. This hanger is a torque-free zone. You get the idea. Let me take these out. Last bolt. There we go. Uh, you can breathe easy now. Intake mouthfuls off. Be able to finish torquing up the bottom ones. Hopefully. Ah. Oops. Ah, I have seen where people will just continuously go click, 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 click. Guess what? You're over tightening your fastener. I have a very beloved former coworker who, Harold, 
Um, congratulations and I hope you're enjoying your retirement. Whenever I think of these little guys, these are the pal nuts that go on top of the studs there. Safety, the hold down nut. Harold used to call people pal all the time, so come on pal! And why do we call them pal nuts? Well, because they say pal right on the side of them. All right, now that we've got everything torqued and the pal nuts are set, uh, now it's time to put in the pushrod tubes. And like I said earlier, the best way to get these old seals off of these tubes is just to pinch them on both sides until you get it to lift up. And then you can just prize them right off the top. Um, and we can install the ones on the top that go into the cylinder head um, and then we'll install these gaskets that go into the block, but you have to push them through the head first. And then a little Parker lube on the seals. when I do an oil change I'll leave uh, one of my empties it has just a little bit of oil in it for such jobs as this. Now I did keep track of which is the intake and which is the exhaust or if you would prefer left or right. Okay, now we're going to put the uh, the rocker assembly on, and uh, what's important here is to find a position uh, where both lifters are not pushing on the push rods. That way, you can tighten and torque the rocker assembly without any extra pressure of the push rods against the valves. I'm going to uh, tighten up these three bolts, safety them and then uh, we'll show you how we do the valve lash procedure. On these uh, keepers, uh, you want to make sure that the uh, little prongs are uh, facing up and over that little ridge and then uh, after you torque them uh, you want to bend one of the flats, bend the tabs up to the flats and uh, these things in brittle after a while and uh, don't be surprised if you you know you're getting all wrapped up and one of these things breaks so keep some of these on hand. Um, as a matter of fact um, I'm trying to keep together an entire gasket um, kit. It's nice to have a full set sometimes and uh, on 
on some occasions, some of this stuff is hard to find. Um, you know, now in a days, you know, took me two months to get a cylinder repaired, so I would hate to be uh, down because I can't find a stupid gasket. So now that we're all torqued up and safe here, um, the next process is to go through and adjust the valve lash. And uh, I have made a special tool for it. So it doesn't look like much. Actually, it looks like it might be in the junk pile. But uh, this was specially made just for this one task. What this is designed to do is to sit up underneath here and put pressure against the push rod so that we can measure our gap underneath the, the valve here. So I repurposed a, a really cheap cotter pin extraction tool, also known as a nose picker, and uh, bend it to the geometry that would work. It goes around the rocker arm and uh, just keeps enough pressure that you're taking up all the lash between the push rod all the way down to the hydraulic lifter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, feeler gauge, a 40 thousandths feeler gauge. You just put pressure on there and make sure that uh, you've got 40 thousandths. Uh, you should feel just a bit of slight pressure on that uh, uh, feeler gauge. So just put that on there. See how much, it's not much lash. You're just taking up that little bit. And the same thing here. Oh, you need to adjust. So, um, but uh, that's the tool. The way we adjust these is there's a uh, set screw and a nut that uh, will take this, un undo this nut, and then we can make our adjustment uh, with a straight slot right here, and then tighten up that jam nut. Um, always, always double check it after you've cranked down the, the jam nut, because sometimes that uh, uh, measurement might change a little bit when you uh, actually put pressure and, and uh, tighten up that uh, this nut here. Kind of helps if you're an octopus. Too much. Back off. Ha <laughs> ha! Too much. Let's lock that in. Yeah, it's kind of tight. Back that off. Right about there. Just have to kind of play with it. Oh, a little bit of a drag. Go. Tweak. There we go. That's the that's the ticket. So when you get these things set, and you go to safety it, get your screwdriver in there and hold it as best you can. Because as you tighten it, it's going to try and push that pin in. That's why I say after making your initial adjustment, 220s, come back and double check it. And just a little bit of drag. And that one is way, way, way. So you might have to change the crank position a little bit to make sure that you don't have any pressure on this spring or on this valve. The valve.
one of the uh, most common reasons for a Franklin not running very well is this uh, valve lash. If it wasn't properly set up, um, and if you're, if it hasn't been checked in a couple hundred hours or quite a few hours, like we're talking like hundreds of hours, um, and you find that your uh, your motor's running kind of funny, um, it's usually because these the valves aren't adjusted correctly. And the misconception is, is that the Franklin has hydraulic lifters, but still has a valve lash. Valve lash is usually for solid tappet hydraulic lift, uh, non-hydraulic lifters. Kind of like uh, VW engines. Um, the Volkswagen motors, they, they tend to get out of adjustment. Generally speaking, every third oil change. Whereas you can actually go a couple hundred hours and be quite fine um, without having to have any issues with these uh, valves moving on you. All right, these are all tightened, safetyed. Valves are adjusted. We can actually now put the cover on. So I like to get the top and bottom bolts lined up. Same deal with these uh, these valve cover gaskets. Uh, if you over tighten them beyond 25 inch pounds, which literally is not even finger tight. I mean, it's literally snug. Um, if you go any tighter than that, you end up pinching that that fastener, pushes down on the gasket, and it'll leak here, and it'll leak here. All right, so we've touched on just about everything that we need to, to get the cylinder installed on the airplane. Um, and so what's left is uh, just connecting all of the spark plugs and the, and the uh, ignition harnesses. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory going forward as far as uh, putting on the, in, the intake manifold and then connecting the muffler, um, putting the baffling back in place, and then uh, I'm gonna throw the prop on the front and then do a ground run before taking the prop back off so that I can put the cowling on. For the interest of saving some, I am going to uh, just leave all that to your imagination. So the next time we see each other, um, which will be like, Now I'm not some rich and famous YouTuber asking you to like and subscribe to this channel. I'm an aviator asking you to like and subscribe to this channel. Because that's the way YouTube works. If you don't click those buttons, YouTube doesn't know that you want to see more aviation content and won't show you more. But if you don't like what you've seen, please leave me a nasty comment down below. Because that's the way the internet works. May all your flying be good flying. got sunshine on a cruddy day. Puts those uh, really nice swirly um, swirly Hope you got that. interrupted by someone taking off. It happens. Right here.